Well, let's talk about right. uh, New York City there. You know, again, this is a heavy regulated area. It will all, was always uh, the five boroughs in New York City are completely different when it comes to Uber and Lyft versus any other part in the country. Uh, basically because of the TLC said, uh, you're not driving here unless you play by our rules. And they have a airtight seal when it comes to New York City uh, and the cab industry there. So uh, for several years, they have uh, had to play in line with uh, the TLC there. And um, yeah, so, you know, recently, uh, what was it? Uh, a few months ago, I think in November, we started talking about this where uh, they were going to require Uber and Lyft to a hike based because of the um inflation of what was going on yeah. uh i don't remember what that is sergio if you do yeah, right before uh, right before christmas you know this was like um the proposed yeah uh, but how, how much were they how much were they proposing uh, they the hike? i don't remember they, they, they got a little bit less they were like proposing about 13 percent. they got a little bit less than what mm -hmm. they wanted but they uber and lyft found a judge and kicked it out of court and then um, it lasted this much longer, and then they settled at 9%. And, you know, TLC is always, you know, had the driver's back. So, um, you know, I'm telling you, I mean, you know, 9% is better than nothing because, look, we're all experiencing inflation, right? And uh, New York drivers have a lot more expenses than the average driver does because they have different licensing requirements, insurance requirements to drive in the city. But finally... You know, they agreed. Again, how did this happen? It happened because TLC st stood their ground. They went to court. It took them two, three months. But then finally, you know, agreed. And and uh, it says the increase comes after a long fight. Drivers participated in three strikes, which is very true. In like, you know, um, including one last month at LaGuardia, which is also very true. Last year, Uber successfully sued to stop the previously proposed driver pay increase. The TLC revised the the way it calculated the increase, which led to Wednesday unanimous vote. There you go. So to me, they got a little bit less than what they asked. Uh, they asked for a lot, you know, a little bit more, but then 9% is 9%. You know, 9% covers mm -hmm. for the inflation that Walt got without any haggling. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> so to me, it's like, yeah. this is a win. This is another win for and, the New York drivers. And a, a, a little bit beyond that is the statements from both Uber and Lyft seem to indicate that companies are on board with pay increase, where an Uber spokeswoman called it more reasonable than what was previously proposed. Yeah, there you go. So that means there is a common ground. These people are not stupid. They're not going to kill their business. They're not, they don't want to go away. We don't want the ride share companies to go away. What we want is like everybody get their fair share, man. It's not a big deal, right? It's all yeah. Thank you, William. Appreciate that. Yeah, yep. they, they definitely do charge a lot. It, and that's the whole thing. It's a lot different. Yep. Um, so even yep. though I am in New York State, I can't go in the five boroughs. I can't pick up. I can drop off in the five boroughs. I just can't pick up. And again, it's it's the regulations that they have there. Um, and it's always been like that. In fact, actually, Uber and Lyft w couldn't even operate in New York State, but they allowed a special allowance for New York City because they had reached this deal um, with the TLC and all that. So um it's actually pretty interesting how New York City and Uber and Lyft drivers and, you know, Uber and Lyft worked and, and came, kind of came together in order to operate there. Uh, but yeah, yeah it is its own. There's a New York City driver here, like, you know, highlight that one, Jay Gons 17 you know, he's putting up all his costs to drive in the city of New York, right? And um, yeah, I mean, New York City is a different animal and you need higher fares to just pay for these things, right? We don't have any of these things in LA. I'm sure we don't have it in the state of Washington or right? Not too many states, pretty tight. At least that increased pay in New York City will have drivers pay the BS buyer TLC fees, two hundred and fifty-two. Yearly drug test, sixty bucks. TLC insurance, two hundred bucks to three fifty, and BS three months car inspection. Okay, so look, your rates are higher. Your rates are a lot higher than the average, right? But uh, at least you're making a living at it, as opposed to we suffering with these upfront fares and. Dry, you know, getting offers for six miles for three and a half bucks. I mean, it's just not doable. Some of these things are just not doable. Just decline these things, man. So uh, no, no, no. Yeah. The, be the best is something that's 150 miles, and you're lucky to get seventy dollars for that. Yeah, and that doesn't you, include you see, the time that, that it would take to get there too. Did you see Walt's long trip there? It was like thirty some miles. He got paid like seventy eight bucks or whatever it was. I'm going like, Shit, that, yeah. that trip was like anywhere else. That'd be like eighteen dollar offer for that trip, Walt, under upfront. 20 bucks maybe 
Uh, William asks, what's the Buffalo area regulations for Uber and Lyft? Uh, the same for basically the entire country. Um, essentially, you just have to have a car within 15 years and uh, got to be, I think, 21. So it's the normal standard ones. There's nothing special when it comes to upstate New York uh, besides. Um, and that, and that's pretty much everywhere uh, yeah. for the most so part. Like the, I said, there are some. One of the things we're working on going forward in Seattle is to try to see if we can actually get laws that make it so that more cars are eligible. I mean, the like Uber black cars that with like a five year limit, uh, by the time you've paid for your car, you know, You're off the you can't use it you. anymore. Yeah. And, and so yeah. let me, let me tell you, actually my, actively car, my one car, my one car is in two th from 2006 and that car is in more mint condition than I would bet 80% of the Uber and Lyft cars that are on the road today. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it comes down, I don't think it's necessarily the age of the car. I mean, I, you could argue maybe it's the insurances on that where there could be some limitations that are placed or, you know, it could be some regulations when it comes to the state level. Um, but, you know, I think there should be some allowances that are made when it comes to it because some cars are older and they're kept up very well. And to tell somebody that, oh, you have to have a newer car because of its age when you know it, it could probably be even better than like i say half the cars that are actually on the road right now yeah. um jonah i wish well, georgia and south carolina would bring some driver legislation yeah. hey you know it starts with with that thought but that, that, that sentiment bringing drivers together who yeah. knows maybe i'll be the uh, i'm looking at south carolina right now so maybe i'll be in that area soon uh and, and you know try try to bring something there so you know I mean, a lot um, of people by the way a lot chris a lot of people are saying that all these proposals and and regulations and rules and whatever they are bills are being offered in blue states right i mean it's not a political thing it's a fact but mm -hmm, yep you know driver is does drivers don't care about blue states red states you know republican democrat whatever they just want to make more money and this is just mm -hmm. logical to me i mean this this if these four, five, six states are just falling in line, and these are pretty big states, they're not small states, right? Then what's going to stop even a red state um, politician not to do this for the, for the, for their constituents, right? I mean, to me, it's like simple. But the fire, I honestly do believe the fire has started. We cannot back off on this. Now nah, we got to push it as drivers. We got to push and support and push and support. Pound your legislative, yeah. you know, officers. And you know, you them. know. It, it goes the, the other thing is you know it started if you want to talk about weed that started blue states you know the majority of blue states legalized weed and yeah. you know it, medical even medical and it started and it's snowballed red states are doing the same thing yeah. um so it, it does it doesn't necessarily come down down to, to blue and red because no, this isn't a blue and red it issue is. it's, it's uh minimum wage laws i mean they they understand that there has to be a floor below which companies can't abuse you. Red, yeah. red states require overtime. They, you know, they, these are things that, again, started from a, a blue state mentality, but then eventually the red states realized, you know, we don't want to shoot our own people in the foot yep. because we're not going to get mm -hmm. reelected. So yep. as a person in a red state, hold your elected people to the fire. And yep. it doesn't matter what team you're on, yep. be on my team. Yep. I'm your constituent. Yeah. And yep. And again, the, the biggest thing is it shouldn't come, like this isn't a political issue. That's the whole thing. It, it comes down to an exploitative issue. And, um, you know, yeah. the, the lack of transparency when it comes to upfront earnings is absolutely bonkers because, again, you, you don't know what you're getting paid. And when you see when you see something come in that is 142 miles and it's going to take you, you know, two hours or so just to get there and you're only getting offered seventy four dollars or something like that. That's that that shows that the time and distance model from before is completely wiped out because even if you just take the mileage, that's like 50 cents a mile in, in my market before it was 67 cents a mile and 17 cents uh, a minute for Uber. It was 71 cents on Lyft and uh, 15 cents a minute on Lyft. So that just completely goes out the window because now if they're offering that same you know, 140 mile ride for $75, that's not even taking into account the time. So if you would have taken the old rates for that exact same trip, you would see it much higher and much different. So you want to talk about a pay cut? Yeah. So now you're looking at exploitative versus, um, you know, and again, on top of that, you're also looking at it as, well, that's what I got paid today, but what about tomorrow? What about the following day? 
What about next week, next year? You don't know what that is because there's nothing to base that on. It's just numbers that they're probably pulling out of their ass. Well, I mean, for the history of the of this planet, okay, everything that requires transportation, okay? I know these companies call themselves high-tech companies. Bullshit, I call it that, okay? They're not high-tech companies. They're just a cab company with an app. And when you recreate the wheel, say that in what part of the transportation industry, from cabs to trucking to airlines, everything is by time and distance. It has to be by time and distance, so I can quote you a price. Now they come around and say, oh, we're recreating the wheel now. We don't care about time and distance. We have these 70 different things that we calculate in a millisecond and spit a price to the driver. I'm like, in what world is this acceptable? I mean, think about it. You get in a cab and you tell a cabbie, oh, don't charge me by the mile and minutes. I mean, it'll be like getting kicked you out of the car. You know what I'm saying? I mean, or a trucker. How am I, if I'm driving for Walmart and I know I'm driving a thousand miles, and I know it's going to take me, I don't know, two days, three days. What am I going to charge you with, right? Am I supposed to just forget about miles and minutes and time and distance and go, oh, here is here it is, 200 bucks for a thousand miles. I'm like, no. So to me, this upfront thing is fine. That, you know, okay, we get the destination, we get to see it. But Walt does not see the destination as he's at 92, 92, whatever, 3% acceptance rate. Oh, we, we see the destination. Different. No, but I'm saying it's because it's a fair pay for the job you're yeah. doing. Yeah. We just want fair yeah, pay. But, That's but he, you know, he he's seeing the pickup and drop off locations. He's just not seeing how much you're getting paid because the upfront earning is going to be different on that ride. Yeah. Right. You know, because the distance could be the same, but the thing is the time you could run into traffic on that same exact route. Like trip the highway trip could be closed. One. I may have to go a different route and, yeah. and I should be paid for that. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, yeah. I'm taking you home at the end of the night. The app is not. Yeah. And my costs are directly associated with distance. The more I drive, the more I have to change tires and oil and the more I'm, mm -hmm. I'm filling my car. And, you know, so my my costs are based on distance and my my arse is based on time. I've got 24 hours in each day and I, I don't get any more. So that's why it's always been, again, time and distance when it comes to transportation. Yep, I agree. Oh, but Walt, I don't understand. I'm showing you the pickup and the drop off. You can't be happy with, with where you know you're going. I mean, we're gonna lower the price just because then you know exactly where where you're gonna be going at the drop off. <laughs> and that's the thing the companies have been doing to try to, to, yeah. to convince us to not see where the, keep our eyes on the ball, if you will. Um, they're like, well, oh, you know, sometimes drivers don't really care about money. We just want to go somewhere. Around. What, what, what are we out here for? No, no. I, you know what? Walt, Walt, that's a great point. I had that. I had a Twitter battle with an ex Uber employee. Okay, the guy goes. The guy goes. You know, not everybody's like you, Serge. I go. What do you mean, not everybody's like me? Like, why are they out there? Right. I go like, are they all retired? Yeah, they, they, and they try to convince you that like, <laughs> why are we out here? I don't. Hey, even I'm know. a platinum driver. Look, I, I have all these rides, and I, I don't care how many rides I'm taking. How much money am I making? Yeah, exactly. I would much, yeah. much rather make a hundred dollars on two rides than a hundred dollars on twenty five rides yeah. because. Uh, 25 rides is a lot of work and a lot of going somewhere and waiting and picking up and uh, I, no, I just give me the money. Yeah, I mean, that, <laughs> yeah. That's, and that's yeah, 25 more. Yeah. That's 20 some odd chances more that somebody's going to try to pull a fast one and get you deactivated. Yeah. All right, thanks for watching. That short little clip was from our live stream, Show Me the Money Club with Sergio and myself. Tuesdays, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. Make sure you subscribe, turn on all notifications so you'll be notified when we go live, as well as all of our awesome content. Make sure to check out this video right here, which will take you to the entire live stream, or check out this video right there. All right, drive smart, everyone.